and welcome to this week's review and this time we're looking at tweaking, modding and upgrading your Project EVO turntable. Welcome to this week's review and I'm looking at the Project Evo turntable. I did a review of the Evo a little while ago on this channel and I'll put a little link up yonder if you'd like to take a look at that if you've missed it first time around. It's priced at around £450 and to my mind it's the best turntable you can buy up to around £500 I would say. But what if you buy yourself an Evo and you enjoy the Evo and you spend time with your Evo and you listen to your music and time passes and then after a while, whether it's months or whether it's even years, you say to yourself, I wonder if I could improve the sound. I wonder if I could just enhance that bass a little bit or the guitar on that track, my favorite song. I wonder if there's any more information I could extract from it, or those cymbal taps, the little reverb tails, the echo of the cymbal taps, could they be extended, could they be enlarged in any way? If those thoughts are entering your head, maybe it's time to upgrade. But of course there's upgrades and then there's upgrades. First up, you could actually remove the Evo from your life. You could sell it, put the cash you've gained from the sale into a pot, so you could upgrade your £450 table to a £1,000 turntable, shall we say. That's one way of upgrading by physically moving up to the next level in technology terms, an all-in-one, ready-made, out-of-the-box little wonder. But look, what happens if you don't have a £1,000 in your back pocket? What happens if you, thinking about it, you realise, well, you're not going to have a thousand pounds in your back pocket anytime soon, or maybe even for the near future. So, what alternatives are there? So there's that category of user who just doesn't have the money to throw around on a new turntable. There's also another category of user, the Evo user. The Evo user who happens to like their Evo. They love their Evo. They don't want to lose their Evo. They don't want to sell their Evo. They want to keep their Evo. They're Evo fans. They don't want to ditch their Evo. They merely want to improve their Evo. So, what do they do? Well, one way of solving both problems is to upgrade the Evo turntable itself. That is, buying a new and improved turntable part or accessory for an additional sum of money and applying that part or accessory to the Evo with the hope of enhancing the turntable's performance. That would be the ideal situation because you wouldn't have to save too much cash to buy in an enhanced part. Hopefully a lot less than a thousand pounds at any rate. Improving the sound quality of your turntable for not a great deal of money would be a great idea. So basically what I'm talking about is not getting rid of your Evo, but upgrading the sound of that turntable for not a great deal of cash. Anywhere between, oh, I don't know, 20 pounds to 150 pounds a go, shall we say. But that level of savings is a lot more approachable, a lot more reachable, a lot more attainable than a thousand pounds. But the question is this, should you? The parts might exist, sure, but really, should you use them? Should you upgrade your Project Evo in the first place? Is it actually worth the bother? Is it worth the effort? 
If so, which parts and accessories should you bring in? So with that in mind, I've brought in a range of upgrades, tweaks and modifications. And well, they're all priced in and around that figure between £20 to around, actually I think it's £140. I think that's the top tweaky figure I have here. Now, this is a project deck. Seven out of the eight components I'm going to be looking at here are project upgrades. Why is that? Well, as I say, this is a project deck. So I know that the project upgrades I have here will all fit the Evo. There will be no compatibility issues. Secondly, well, Project itself are that type of company. They love producing add-ons, upgrades, and accessories. There are not too many companies, especially when you look at turntables, who produce quite so many of them. On that level, I think Project should be applauded because at least they're supporting the hi-fi hobbyist. If you do want to do these upgrades, the amount of choice out there, well, yes, there are some third parties around and about, but Project, well, they make a bit of an issue out of upgrades and accessories. They, they really go all out. And also the fact is that Project is a big company. They produce lots of their own turntables. So again, they should be applauded for even bothering. I know some companies who produce turntables and they think accessories are, well, just take too much of their time. And it's, well, really, you know, can't really be bothered with all that nonsense. It's just, oh, really, really, really? That kind of thing. Most hi-fi companies would rather that you buy the newest and latest flavors of hi-fi product currently hitting the market. They would rather that you do not keep hold of your old product and tweak the same. After all, where's the profit in that? So I like Project's attitude in that they're offering low cost, high value upgrades. So well done Project. Now, I'm not saying that all of the items I'll be looking at in this video are amazing. Some are, some are amazing, some are very good, some are okay, one or two are not the best, I would say. But we'll go through each one in turn. For those with reduced budgets or those that love their hi-fi components and just want to tweak the same, upgrades, tweaks and modifications allow you to get even more out of the hardware you already have. And of course, they allow you to save a bit of cash in the meantime. So I have eight items, eight individual products to test with the Project Evo. I'll be applying all of the eight products to the turntable, the Project Evo, and seeing if they, well, if they're any good, if they work, if they actually enhance the sound. But how did I go about doing the testing in the first place? To give you a better idea of what each and every accessory actually does to the sound, I drafted each item in and fitted that to the tent table all on its own, sound tested it on its own, and then removed it to bring the tent table back to its default original status. Then I brought in a second product, tested that, then removed it to the tent table's original status, and on and on I went. In this way, I hoped to hear and thus convey how the sound was transformed, tweaked, and thoroughly messed about by each individual mod. Also, I could experience how the part or accessory integrated into the turntable itself, and if that new entry impacted on the ease of use of the Evo or its operation in some way. In this way, you can decide if the mod is for you. And look, if you end up liking more than one of the items I'm gonna be talking about, well, you can make a little list and you can decide on your priority and which one you're going to get first and which one you're going to buy second and so forth. Now, this could be a very messy video, so there will be no closer look section per se. What I'm going to do is introduce each and every item and then mix a bit of closer look section video with my to camera sound test results. And then we'll do that as a 
individual capsule and then we'll move on to the next product and do that in the same way and we'll go through there to the end and then we'll get to a conclusion to finish off the video as a whole. Now I may have a few more notes to offer you as we progress but I'll talk about those as we progress through the video. So let's get testing shall we? What musical source did I use for these tests? Well I looked at a Decca release and a little bit of prog. I looked at Camel's Nude and I chose two particular tracks from that album. The first was a track called Homecoming which is a short piece featuring a sort of faux live recording of a brass band complete with a big bass drum. There's piccolos in there, there's tuba, there's even some brass and also I think a synth. A rather unusual occupant of a brass band but there you are. In this case the brass band walks slowly from the left channel through the stereo image in the centre and over to the right channel and then disappears. Following that is a second track called Lies and that features a slow paced rock outing with bass and lead guitar, drums and a very smoky Hammond organ plus another synth. So with these two tracks there's a host of frequency options here to investigate the sound. Now lately I've done a, ooh, a couple of videos on plasmats, so I thought well this subject is in the front of my mind at the moment so why not start with a plasmat? So I chose the cork it plasmat for the first test. This one is priced at 18 pounds and 50 pence. If you have read or seen my recent Platamas reviews then you will already be aware of the Cork It Platamas which I recommend as a budget accessory buy. It's easy to install. Just remove the felt mat currently on the Evo's platter and place this new mat on the centre spindle of the same platter. Job done. So how did this actually sound? Well let's take the brass band section of my test first. Well there was a, an immediate lowering of the noise floor I felt with the cork it mat in place. What the cork it did was to enhance the instrumental separation. So imagine you're watching a brass band and it's walking down the road. Normally these brass bands are quite closely knit aren't they? The people in them walk relatively close together and they're moving as a single unit. With the cork it in place, well, each individual member seemed to space out a little bit more. They seem to move slightly further apart. And when you're seeing a crowd of people and they do move a little bit further apart, you can see more details. You can see a little bit more of what they're wearing. You can see a little bit more of their facial expressions or their hairstyle or what shoes they're wearing because often the lower parts of their bodies are hidden when they're walking around. So you can see a little bit more of their general overview, their general frame. You can see more detail. Well it's the same when you're hearing this brass band. So you can hear each individual item a little clearer now. There's more information coming from each individual instrument now. The main plus point was really the finer details, the subtle stuff. That's the plus point of the platter mat. That's the main advantage. It's those little fine details that you could hear a little bit more now. With that lowering of the high frequency noise there's also a slight calming influence on the soundstage as a whole, almost as if the soundstage had the cleaners in to give it a tidy up and a bit of a polish. So all in all, big thumbs up for the Corkit. Great value for money. I loved it. Next up we have some isolation feet and these things fit underneath the project turntable itself. In the box I received there were four feet, although 
I only needed three because the Evo has three feet, not four. And the price is £140, which I think was the most expensive item in this test, I think. I'll double check as we go, but I'm pretty sure it was. Now, as I say, installation, well, it's rather simple, actually. You just take the feet out of the box and you put the feet underneath the feet of the Evo. You put the isolation feet on your shelf and you lower the turntable on those feet. And that's it. Away you go. So what do these feet do? Well, in some ways, the absorbent feet do the same job as the corkit platter mat. They just do it in a different manner. The corkit mat lowers the high frequency noise and does well, but it does so in and around the band, the instruments and the vocals, producing a lowered noise floor so you can hear more detail within the band itself. The absorbent feet take a more sort of global view of high frequency noise because they move outside the boundaries of the band itself and expand the soundstage in general. So the soundstage does sound larger. There's more space around the band. There's a larger area for the instrumentalists to play within. So the absorbent feet take a larger look at the sound as a whole. But, but I wanted more. If I'm going to be paying a hundred and 40 pounds for these isolation feet. I want a certain level of performance from those feet. And I didn't think I was getting that from the absorbits, actually. Now, the issue I have with these feet is this. The bit that does the work, the bit that does the actual damping is at the center of each feet you basically are given a sort of small hockey puck of TPE, which is oh, off the top of my head, thermoplastic elastomer, I think, TPE for short, anyway. So this piece of TPE, which is favored by Project in and around its turntable designs to damp and reduce vibration, it's an effective material and it does a great job. The problem is though, the TPE in each foot is only part of the cost. It's only part of the 140 pounds you're being asked to pay. The majority of that 140 pounds falls back on the surrounding chassis, which is made out of aluminium. So the TPE hockey puck is attached to a plate and that plate and the hockey puck is then put inside a sort of cup and that gives the turntable a firm foundation. It gives the turntable a solid place to rest its own feet. It gives solidity and structure to the feet and helps to support your turntable very well indeed. My problem is this. I think there's too much money and too much emphasis placed on the chassis bit of the feet. To my mind, it's over-engineered and there's not enough money being spent on the actual damping bit. So the performance, to my mind, is not as good as it should be. You're actually paying too much for that aluminium chassis and that aluminium plate. Too much of your cash is being thrust towards that metal bit. Too much of your cash is being spent on the metal. Not enough is being spent on the TPE. So do they work? Yes, yes they do. Can you tell the difference sonically when you're using them, when they're in place? Yes, yes you can. But do they offer value? No, no they don't. I don't think they do a good enough job for the price. So for me, I'll give them a miss. Next up, we're looking at a clamp. It's called the Clamp It, and it's priced at 75 pounds. Now the point of the clamp it is to place the center of the clamp it itself. There's a little hole underneath the disc part of the clamp that sits over your turntable's center spindle. 
and it's there to reduce vibration and lower high frequency noise. Once placed over the spindle, you rotate the center knob of the clamp it to secure it to the spindle. The only change in basic operation of the turntable is that yes, you'll need to remove the clamp to change your record and then reapply the clamp when the new record is being put into place. Applying the clamp it does offer an intriguing change in sound. It's not the most obvious of changes, but changes there are. The first impression is that the sound has been affected in a subtle manner for the better, but nothing dramatic. Living with the clamp hit for any length of time and you suddenly realize what it's doing. The clamp imposes a sense of discipline on certain areas of the sound, but it tweaks here and it touches there, adds a little here and a dab there. So the brass on the first brass band track sounded more focused now. The brass was honed and therefore provided a greater amount of detail. Similarly, the drum strikes on the track, Lies, now had a leaner and sharper punch. You do lose a little bit in dynamic reach, just a touch, but what you get in return is a trade-off. You get that focus and you get that discipline. But there is a but, I'm afraid. The clampet does have those positive effects I've just mentioned, yes, and it does work. But again, for the price, £75, I would have liked more. I felt that probably, I don't know, I could be wrong, but possibly too much money was spent on the aesthetics and not enough money was spent on the actual implementation itself. I felt you could spend maybe £40 on a Michelle clamp and get just enough, if not better, performance from the clamp itself. I felt the clamp it was okay in terms of performance, but rather overpriced. So once again, this one's not for me. I'm looking for a better set of results next time, fingers crossed. I'm looking at a replacement power supply. This one is called the High Power It, and it's priced at 25 pounds. For this accessory, we're going to turn the turntable around. We're going to look at the rear of the turntable and we're going to access the power supply, which in this case is connected to the turntable with a barrel plug. Now the new power supply is connected in exactly the same way as the old power supply. And so if you connect the new power supply, as you would do the old one, you insert the barrel plug and then you connect it to the mains and you're done. You forget about the actual enhanced power supply and you get on and listen to your music. That is, it has no impact on the Evo's use in any way. But how did the high power it, the upgraded power supply, how did that impact the sound? Well, it added confidence, plenty of confidence, principally in and around the bass regions, but it also affected the mids and the treble. Everyone playing on the test tracks sounded like they really knew what they were doing. They'd all had a good night's sleep, a hearty breakfast, and they learned all the songs. They wanted to just get on with it, and they did so with a supreme sense of conviction and certainty. Now, if I was being hypercritical, I could say, well, yes, these effects are great, and it's doing a really good job, and I like the improvements, but I could do with a little bit more. But, and this is a but in a good way, but the price is only £25. And for £25, well, I thought the high power is offered excellent value for money. When you put the price into the pot, the actual sonic improvements are, on that basis, pretty large indeed. It does a wonderful job. And there's more to love here. Bass was broad in its presentation. It sounded full, but also controlled and focused. It also had a new strength and gave you the impression that it had power in reserve if required. So that confidence is then transferred to you, the listener. Listening to the music now, 
you felt you were in good hands. So I would rate this power supply, this enhanced power supply, the high power it, up there with the Corkit Platter Mat. So for the price, I loved the high power it. I would give it a big thumbs up. Next up, well, we're getting to the nitty gritty. We're getting a little bit serious. We're looking at a replacement sub platter. This one is called the W Aluminium Sub Platter and it's priced at £115. Okay, this is big boy sound. Now, this is something different to what we've experienced before in terms of the manner of the upgrade and what it does to the actual sound. The sub platter actually sits underneath the main platter. So you remove the main platter and the sub platter sits underneath, and that's the little wheel that supports the belt and the sub platter actually rotates the main platter above. So it's an important piece of technology. It's inherently fundamental to the basic structure of the turntable. It's part of the core of the Evo itself, and the upgraded sound certainly shows that. In terms of installation, you need to lift the old sub platter out of the Evo's plinth, after removing the belt, of course. Then you slowly lower the new sub platter back into the gaping hole of the plinth. Allow this new sub platter to descend into the hole in its own time. It may not want to go directly in there, it may want to sink slowly in the west, and so allow it to do that. Don't push it, don't force it, just leave it alone to sink into that hole in its own time. It may take 30 seconds or so. Once in place, you can replace the belt and you can continue by placing the main platter over the top of the sub platter. So how does the new aluminium sub platter change the sound? Listening to the aluminium sub platter is like talking to an adult of 35 years of age with all of that extra articulation, the increase in vocabulary, the maturity in view and approach to life. And listening to the Evo's original sub platter is then like talking to a 12 year old kid. Hence, adding the new sub platter adds weight, it adds maturity, it adds balance. So, listening to the brass band section in my test track, I was actually hearing new sounds for the first time. There was definitely a new brass sound there, which I hadn't really heard properly the first time around. As for the rock track lies, well, there was a greater tonal realism now, and there was far more solidity in the presentation. As for the aluminium sub platter itself, well, this might cost £115, but let me tell you this, it's worth every single penny. And let's continue with platters. This time we're looking at the main platter and we're going to replace the default platter with an acrylic option. This one is priced at £110. So how do you fit it? Well, you remove the felt mat off your original Evo. You then gently lift the original platter from the Evo, put that safely elsewhere. Then you take your acrylic platter and you place that gently over the center spindle and you're done. You don't need to replace the felt mat on the acrylic platter. This particular platter does not need one. This particular platter works best without the felt mat in place. And just in case you've already bought yourself a cork it mat by this time, well, you won't be using the cork it mat on the acrylic platter. Again, it doesn't need it. And what did it do to the sound? Well, in general terms, it lowered the noise floor. But the platter did more than that. It also brought a new mid-range insight to the mix that was highlighted during the early brass band segment 
which included a typical piccolo sound trilling away during the entire sequence. Earlier, this piccolo was, if anything, slightly irritating because it was rather shrill in its sound. By adding the acrylic platter, the whistling sound was stretched. There was more information to it. There was more middle to the actual whistle sound. It was less piercing, in other words. Complexity increased, you might say. This and other effects on the instruments added a richer flavour to the soundstage. So again, in the grand scheme of this test, it's a relatively expensive part. But, once more, worth every single penny. It brought great maturity to the overall sound. Again, big thumbs up. Now, earlier on, we looked at isolation fees, but this time, well, I'm going to enlarge the scale, rather. I'm going to look at an isolation platform. This platform is called a ground it, and it's priced at £119. <laughs> is simple. You literally lift the turntable up and away to clear the space of your shelf. You then lift the grounded platform onto your shelf and the turntable onto the grounded platform. And that's it. You're done. The only one element here you need to watch out for is the Evo then raises itself in height because it's on top of this platform. So just be a little bit careful of where your turntable is situated and you've got enough headroom to cope with that. So what did the grounded do in terms of sound? Well it infused the mid-range with air and space. It also added tonal balance in terms of balancing the bass and the upper frequencies. The bottom line here was a confident neutrality in the sonic presentation. It was notable how much the instruments appeared to spread out and find room for themselves to perform at their best. The music never felt cramped. You never got the feeling that the musicians were ever bumping elbows here. More than that, the soundstage sounded nicely structured, almost 3D in its presentation. So the music itself had more structure and form. So what did I think overall? Well, I like this a lot and I highly recommend it. So another thumbs up from me. Finally, we're looking at the cartridge, which means moving away from project and staring straight into the eyes of Autophon because we're looking at upgrading the Autophon 2M Red, which is the bundled cartridge with the Evo, and upgrading that to a 2M Blue. The price of this upgrade, £139. To upgrade the 2M Red, you keep the chassis in place and you literally pull the stylus, the red part of the actual 2M Red, you pull that away from the chassis and you pick up your blue stylus and you reverse the process. You push that into place on the chassis. Now I would urge you to read the instructions that come with the actual stylus itself and follow those closely. Take your time, don't rush it, and you'll have no issues, I'm sure. But suffice to say that the stylus, when I did the job from my perspective, was pretty straightforward and pretty easy. I didn't experience any issues at all. So look, some of the components in this overview have been pretty important in terms of improving the sound. They've had a pretty major impact on the final sound quality. So how did the 2M Blue stylus upgrade, how did that impact on the sound? Well, the 2M Blue provided a major leap in sound quality. Again, big boy hi-fi, you might say. A richer, more expensive sonic response. Cymbals sounded like large slabs of metal, 
that piccolo whistle I mentioned earlier was far more complex in the mix. Percussion sounded more solid. Now, bass was meaty. The lead guitar, a place of threat and delicacy all at the same time. Again, I was very happy with the 2M Blue upgrade, and I would say that the upgrade was well worth the cash. And that's it. So let's bring all of those upgrades together, shall we? And let's put some perspective on what we've just seen. How would I conclude the upgrades for the Project Evo? So let's just put this into perspective, shall we? Just to reiterate and to repeat, when I'm talking about upgrading the Evo, I'm talking about doing so over a period of time, saving a little bit of money here and a little bit of money there, and buying one upgrade at a time to enhance the Evo a little bit here and a little bit there. Upgrading is really for people who are on a budget and don't have the ability to splash the cash on a brand new and rather expensive turntable. It's a great way to enhance your Evo turntable a little bit at a time, when you can, when the budget allows, when you have cash in your pocket. Let's have a little bit of fun, shall we? What would happen if I took the best of the upgrades I've just talked about? What would happen if I applied all of those upgrades at once on the Evo? Now, this is not something you would normally do. It's not something I would recommend you do. But if you eventually get to that point, where would your Evo sit in the grand scheme of things compared to the competition, compared to other turntables of a similar price point? Now, of course, to get to that point, you would have been upgrading for quite a while. but even so, just as a bit of fun, as I say, how would the Evo sit within the competition? Well, I didn't combine all of these accessories, as you might expect. The absorbent feet were left out, as was the clamp it clamp. Both of those underperformed, I felt. But the more impressive grounded platform was included. The cork it mat didn't make the cut, but the only reason it didn't make the cut is because I was using the acrylic platter instead. The cork it mat remains highly recommended. I also added the new sub platter, the new aluminium sub platter, and the new power supply and the 2M blue stylus. On a basic level, this fully modded Evo added a whole new level of maturity when compared to the original Evo, plus enhanced neutrality and a whole new level of balance to boot with a confident and solid base area that was both organic and responsive, plus an insightful mid-range that was infused with detail, and a treble section that was both delicate and full of information. In fact, the changes were so large, so significant, I would call the Evo fully modded, that is, I would call this fully modded Evo and Evo 2, I think the differences are that significant. So, for this concluding section, that's how I'm going to refer to this modded Evo, the Evo 2. So, does the Evo 2 compete with designs between £500 and £1,000? Well, yes, absolutely so. Yes, it does. I brought out my Riga RP3, for example, and, well, I have to say that the RP3 had the edge in terms of mid-range performance, but I felt that the Evo 2 was superior in the lower areas in terms of bass. So let's explain that in a little bit more detail. I felt the Riga had greater dynamic reach 
and complexity, although I do think that was down to the tone arm, although the Evo 2 was close indeed in mid-range terms and certainly has nothing at all to be ashamed of. It still performs wonderfully in mid-range and treble terms. But as I say, the Evo 2 offers a fuller, more naturalistic and organic lower frequency area with a much more satisfying bass response. I feel that sometimes the Riga had a rather lean presentation. The Riga was precise, sure, but the Evo 2 had a more interesting and naturalistic presentation in bass terms. I also brought out my Michelle Techno deck, which is priced around a thousand pounds, and I actually felt that the mid-range balance of the Evo 2 was just a little bit superior to the Michelle on those terms. In short, the mods, the tweaks, the upgrades for the Evo 2, Evo 2 standard, Evo 2 being my designation, that is, not projects, my Evo 2 standard, I feel that it's a wholly successful operation and it just shows how much spare capacity there is in a basic Evo. It shows how much you can take it down the line and improve those sonics. And just as an aside, I wouldn't go any further than the upgrades I've listed here for the Evo without seriously looking at the tone arm next. After all of these upgrades are fitted, the next upgrade bottleneck would be that tone arm, I reckon. Even so, as it stands, the fully modded Evo 2, as I like to call it, is a serious contender for those who want to upgrade slowly and carefully when funds allow. That is, the effort, the investment and the energy spent doing these upgrades in the first place is wholly worth it. You know, I can see some people buying an Evo turntable as their first and last turntable because I can easily see that turntable being slowly upgraded over time, slowly modified and tweaked to improve the sound they already love. The basic Project Evo is already an excellent turntable, but what these upgrades do is that they extend the turntable's usable life. They push the sonic envelope and they extend that initial investment. There are not too many turntables currently on the market that you can genuinely say provide supreme value for money. Backed as it is by a full suite of upgrade accessories, which is unusual and is also a major point in its favor, the Project Evo arriving with its excellent out-of-the-box sound and upgrade potential is certainly one of those. Basically, if you have or are looking to get yourself a Project Evo, look carefully at these upgrades and tweaks and modifications. They're well worth a serious examination because many of them will improve the sound of the basic Evo quite dramatically. And as I'm making this video, the one thing I'm hearing all about me are rising prices. So maybe, maybe the future or the near future at least of turntables per se is better value for money. Maybe the Project Evo with its ability to be upgraded and enhanced to gain more value for money from your initial investment of £450. Maybe this is a turntable for our times. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching this video and thank you for sticking with me to the end of this video. And thank you very much for your support. If you could click the old subscribe and like buttons below, that would be very welcome indeed. Don't forget to check down in the description. There's a whole host of links. There's chapter headings too for you to bounce around this particular video, which in this particular video, could be useful, actually. Also, please check out my Patreon. Please consider supporting me on Patreon because without it, this channel don't exist because I really do depend on your generous donations to keep this thing going in the first place. And may I take this opportunity to also thank my current Patreon supporters. Your help is absolutely critical. Thank you. I will be back next week with another video of goodness knows what subject but i will be back with something who knows we'll see hopefully you can join me because i'd like to have your company until that time folks bye bye for now